Party. It's indeed not a very good Friday because the country witnessed 14 fatalities from the COVID-19 disease and also the country is also mourning the death of Machakos County Senator. We have details of that. And of course, in the last 24 hours, the Minister of Health has reported that about 40 or 52 COVID-19 patients are on supplementary oxygen and from the 52, 44 are on general wards while eight are in HDU. The question is, who is taking care of these patients while majority of the healthcare workers are on strike since Monday clinical officers and nurses began their strike and in a seven point demands, they say among other things they will not return to work until they have access to quality and adequate personal protective equipment and also provision of the comprehensive medical cover. On the other hand, the Council of Governors says that there is no money to meet all that all those demands. So what's the end game? We have details of that and much more right here on Channel One Weekend at Purity and Cell and at KBC Channel One News. The hashtag to use is Channel One Weekend and Channel One Weekend begins right now with the highlights. Morning, the late Boniface Mutinda Kabaka, President Hul Kenyatta, lead the nation to pay tribute to the fallen Machako senator who died Friday morning while undergoing treatment. Pleading for the independence of the judiciary, Chief Justice David Maraga says they proposed judicial ombudsperson in BBI to give the executive an edge. <laughs> Uwe mfanya kasi wa afya, useme unataka uongezu ya pesa, hiyo pesa nitatoa wapi. And it is a game of who will blink first as governors and striking health workers stand their grounds. Glad to have you join us tonight. My name is Purity Musel and Simon Karoda is our sign language interpreter tonight. Let's begin our broadcast. And President Uhuru Kenyatta has led the nation in paying tribute to the fallen Machako Senator Boniface Mutinda Kabaka. The president eulogized the late Senator Kabaka as a committed, legislator, gifted debater and progressive leader. Deputy President William Ruto in his tribute said the late Kabaka was a fine legal man and a fighter of equal justice who contributed to the rule of law. The Machako senator died Friday at an Nairobi hospital where he has been undergoing a treatment. President Uhuru Kenyatta, while leading the country in paying tribute, eulogized the late senator as an approachable leader who took keen interest in transforming the lives of the people of Machakos County and Kenyans at large. The head of state saying it is unfortunate that the pain of death has robbed the country of a committed legislator, gifted debater and progressive leader who used his skills as a lawyer to enrich legislative processes in the Senate. On his part, Deputy President William Ruto said the late senator was a fine legal mind and a fighter of equal justice who contributed to the rule of law. He termed the late senator as a modest yet gifted, insightful, progressive and a far-sighted leader who was genuinely committed to public service who resolved to transform the lives of the people of Machakos. The late Machako senator passed on Friday morning at around 8.45 a.m. while recuperating at the intensive care unit after undergoing a surgery at the Nairobi hospital. So what happened on Thursday night is that he developed complications um, and was rushed to this hospital. Upon arrival, they took a head scan. And it was discovered that um, the clot had gotten into the brain, it burst uh, blood vessels, and there was serious hemorrhage. The late senator is said to have recovered from COVID-19 before he was again taken ill last Friday, leading to his admission at the intensive care unit at Nairobi Hospital, where he succumbed to complications of blood clot. 
I saw him breathe last night and today at 8.45 a.m. the doctor certified that we have lost our colleague. That's the truth of the story. A very articulate, very humorous and very firm debater. Kabaka would take a stand and it did not matter whom he's pleasing or who is not pleasing. He didn't care whether you he didn't care whether you liked what he, the stand he took or not. And while he was a senator, he was out there fighting for the rights of the people of Machakos and more so for the rights and development of the people of Kenya. We will miss him. He was a jovial man. And uh, this is a big loss to us and especially to his family. The late Senator Kabaka has left behind two widows and children. The president yet again paid tribute to the late former minister Joe Nyaga, who died Friday at a hospital in Nairobi. Nyaga is said to have been battling COVID-19. The late Nyaga has died at the age of 72. Deputy President eulogized the late Nyaga as a selfless, bold, visionary and industrious leader who took exceptional honor in public service. The DP further saying that the late was a vocal, responsive and a development conscious leader. The bodies of the two are lying at the Lee funeral home as burial plans have commenced. Kamchemenza for Channel One News. And may the souls of the two and 14 others who died from COVID-19 complications rest in eternal peace. Elsewhere, Chief Justice David Maraga now recommends the ombudsman be appointed by the Judicial Service Commission and not by the President as recommended by the Building Bridges Initiative Constitutional Amendment Bill. Maraga claims the proposal is a direct conflict and duplication of roles between the ombudsman and Judicial Service Commission. Chief Justice David Maraga, who is also the chairman of the Judicial Service Commission, is opposed to the appointment of the Judicial Ombudsman, saying the move risks parallel complaints being instituted with the JSC as well as the Ombudsman and adds to the possibility of different decisions being arrived at, resulting in a constitutional dilemma. The result of the BBI proposal is a direct conflict and a duplication of roles between the Ombudsman under the Judicial Service Commission. The risk of parallel complaints being instituted with the JSC as well as the Ombudsman and the possibility of different decisions being arrived at is real and, must res and may result into a constitutional quagmire. Flanked by other JSC members, Maraga said the office of the Ombudsman should also be enhanced strengthened and made accessible to members of the public. Such a move will only serve to erode public confidence in a commission that was termed before 2010 as no longer regarded as truly independent so that the judiciary is seen as vulnerable to government pressures. It is for this reason that the chairs recommends, among other, others, that the structure, functions, the structure and functions of the Ombudsman, as proposed by the BBI uh, report under the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Bill 2020, be abandoned and instead the Judiciary Ombudsman be appointed by the Judicial Service Commission with a mandate to conduct investigations and a report to, to the Judicial Service Commission, which will take appropriate action as authorized by the Constitution. Maraga said though the BBI Secretariat has closed the window for any more amendments to the bill, the JSC will still send them a copy of the recommendations. We are making our position clear and we will send the BBI Secretariat a copy of this report. If they ignore it, the public already knows the position of the judiciary. With regard to the cases that are in court, the JSC will look at them and see whether or not they need to join or they, 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 they can be held or uh, conducted without the JSC being involved. Maraga, who Friday takes his terminal leave ahead of his retirement in January after attaining the age of 70 years, is also opposed to the number of executive appointees in the JSC from 4 to 5. The proposal seeks to enhance 
the number of executive appointees in the JSC from four to five. The unusually heavy tilt towards executive representation in the JSC compared to other commissions has the potential danger of entrenching executive authority in the JSC and by extension in the judiciary. The Council of Governors now want striking healthcare workers to shelve their demands, which it has termed unrealistic in the current global financial situation. The Council's chairperson, Weekly for Paranya, says counties have already spent a lot of money in the COVID-19 response and want the medics to end their strike and allow negotiations with the employer as they are needed the most at the time the country is battling the coronavirus pandemic. Saa hii hata ukija kwa uwe mfanyakazi wa afya useme unataka uongezwe pesa hiyo pesa nitatoa wapi Oparanya is calling upon striking healthcare workers to resume duty and help the nation fight the coronavirus pandemic that has battered nearly every sector. The Kakamega governor claimed the demands by healthcare workers were unrealistic but only promised that county governments will try to address what they are capable of doing. <laughs> Watu waende mkomo na tunataka tupikane na huu konjwa itafanya watu wetu wakufa kwa wiki. While Busia Governor Sospita Ojamong encourages Busia residents to consider private and missionary hospitals saying talks to end the strike may take long. Nataka kuhakikisha watu hii mkomo haitaisha hivi karibuni. Lingana na ile matakwa ya huduma wa huduma wetu. Nasema wale ambao wanaweza kupata msaada kwa mahali popote However, the medics have received a boost in their fight for better welfare as Kotu Secretary General Francis Atoli weighed into the matter, asking the government to act with speed and hear the cries of the striking medics. Atoli says without the frontline soldiers, Kenya is bound to lose the fight against the coronavirus pandemic. Na wanakutana na hii ugonjwa wa COVID. Hii ugonjwa ni mbaya sana. Umeua madaktari wengi. Na ukiangalia hii list ya madaktari wamekufa three quarters ni walio. Wale wa maana kabisa wengi. Na mimi siwezi kunyamaza madaktari wakikufa. Sentiments resulting with a position taken by health rights activists who want the government to give priority to healthcare workers if it's committed to dealing with the pandemic. The lobby group in the health sector says it was unfortunate that healthcare workers are suffering, yet many cartels away millions at Kemsa and are now dancing with their loot. We demand that the Ethics and Anti Corruption Commission and the Director of Criminal Investigation fast track independent investigation on the already suspected cases of corruption at national and county levels involving the Kemsa case, the medical equ uh, equipment supply case, the Afia get scam scandal, and lastly the COVID-19 funds. And the nurses and clinical officers say they will not return to work until they are assured of their safety, especially at places of work at a time when cases of healthcare workers even succumbing to the COVID-19 disease have been reported and others infected. So they say they will not go back to work until their demands are met. On the other hand, the Council of Governor, uh, Governors say that they do not have the kind of money to meet the requirements or demands by the healthcare workers. We are again in the middle of a pandemic. So what should be the way forward? Tell us at Purity and Museo and at KBC Channel 1 use the hashtag to use is Family Matters KBC. Let's take a first commercial break. Don't go too far. We still have a Plenty more to come. When the world changed, it made us go back to the simple joys and love the little things even more. 
like serving up your best, eating together and sharing more. Now, oh, we'll take nothing for granted and always remember to taste the simple joys. Enjoy the magic of Christmas with Coca-Cola. Winners Chapel International Nairobi invites you to join us at Shiloh 2020 theme turnaround encounters come full of expectation 8th to 11th December 2020 as we broadcast live from Faith Tabernacle Ota Lagos Nigeria with the Bishop Dr. David Oyedepo live on KBC Channel 1 and Radio Taifa from 10 p.m. to midnight Amazing Kenyan TV and film productions, and let me tell you, true story. Hapa hapa Kenya, mm -hmm. we have amazing talents. Findi oni likuana kuambia. Hey, by the way, Kaliche, ni no na. Eh, hey, unona. Ni no na. Hmm. Jesse, si usemu unona je. Ni no na si wakonezi talent. Hmm. We appreciate you in a big way. Hmm. Na wa celebrate you. Eh. Hey. Yeah. yeah, that's excellent. By the way, na kuwa sababu yeyo on the 12th of December. 2020, hey. 7.30 p.m. Kalasha International Film and TV Awards. Eish. Best TV Awards, Jinani Actor. So, tutaifanya. Wasi wama stand to a Kenya. Tufanya virtual ama tufanya. Ifanywe virtual. Na hata kama itakuwa virtual, hey. iyo day we are asking guys uh -huh. to dress up. Of course. Madimu wakuje, wame kama wewe uvai ki night dress. Si night dress, Bernard. It's a night glam gown. See, see easy. Na uvai taxido, please. Tuxedo. It's called a tuxedo. Tuxedo kwa sababu ikona kale kamkia, oh. kapengwe. Listen, listen, sawa guys. Meskia, please, on the 12th of December at 7.30pm. Mukuje kama mumengara, you glam up, you look nice. Where are the tuxedos, gentlemen? Right there in the comfort of your home. And tuxedo. Ladies, please, ladies, wear those glamorous outfits. Na tukutane tu hapo, 7.30, as we enjoy this 10th edition of the Kalasha TV and Film Awards. It's going to be amazing. Maze iki tu siyasi ata. Siyasi. I got the right. Nikon da minda. Many thanks for staying with us. You're watching Channel One Weekend. The church is calling for further discussion and consensus on the ongoing Building Bridges report to help promote unity and peace in the country. The men of the cloth say there is need to take on board those with divergent views for a more united country. The church is also offering its structures to be used by the Minister of Education when schools resume in January. The church has remained tight-lipped on whether it will support the Building Bridges Constitutional Amendments 2020 proposals or it will oppose it but instead piling pressure for further deliberation saying all is not lost. The National Council of Churches of Kenya and the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops calling on the BBI architects to open a window of amendments in the draft bill to avoid a contested referendum which might polarize the country ahead of the 2022 general election. We restate the importance of dialogue and consensus building. The constitution is too important to be made the subject of conflict and political competition. Oh, there is still room between now and the time we go to the referendum, that we can still change or at least add, uh, ch uh, 
get intervention administratively to address some of those issues. The church leaders vowing not to allow politicians to use the pulpit to advance divergent views on the report. Desist from according politician space to carry out campaigns for or against the bill in the places of worship. Meanwhile, the Church and Clergy Association of Kenya has questioned the timing of referendum push, saying more efforts should be put to fight the effects of COVID-19 in the country. To sustain this momentum and to remain focused, we must address as a nation the pressing needs such as the doctors and nurses strikes. To sit down and resolve that issue because it is an emergency and we can't deal with two emergencies, COVID-19 and the medic strike. And the referendum is not an exam. We can't have questions of A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. And that is why we are saying the referendum will either be a yes or a no. Nahoma Bay wamesema yes. As schools gear up to reopen next month, the clergy called on the government to ensure adequate safety measures are put in place to cushion students from contracting the disease and even offer their structures to be used if need be. The Ministry of Education can engage religious institutions to avail facilities to be used as classrooms to achieve social distancing requirements. We further call upon the government to consider waiving school fees School fees are rare for parents who have been heavily impacted by the pandemic. Suleiman Yeri, Channel One News. Unit owners in a building will now be able to own an individual title deed following the signing into law of the sectional properties and statute law miscellaneous amendments by President Uhuru Kenyatta. The Act 2019 provides for the provision of buildings into units to be owned by individual proprietors, among other elaborate provisions. The new sectional properties and statute law abolishes the Sectional Properties Act of 1987. In the act, occupants with units in a said building would share a single title deed of the property. The new law allows owners of the units to have an individual title deed. The statute law, Miscellaneous Amendment Act 2020, amends 21 statutes, among them the Interpretation and General Provisions Act, Records Disposal Act, Penal Code, Public Holidays Act, and Firearms Act. Other laws amended by the new law are the Official Secrets Act, Kenya Roads Board Act, Statistics Act, Employment Act, Accountants Act, Judicial Service Act, Kenya National Commission on Human Rights Act, Employment and Labor Relations Court Act, Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission Act, and National Police Service Commission Act. Also amended are the Public Appointments, Parliamentary Approval Act, Universities Act, Kenya Law Reform Commission Act, Investment and Financial Analyst Act, Witness Protection Act and Kenya Coast Guard Act. Irene Mchuma Odim, Channel One. Elsewhere, only 5,000 people will be allowed to access Nyayo Stadium, the venue of the 57th Jamhuri Day celebrations to be held this Saturday. Nairobi Regional Commissioner James Kianda says preparations to host the event have been concluded and the celebration will be marked in accordance with the Ministry of Health COVID-19 protocols. National Police Service in their rehearsal for this year's Jamuri Day celebrations at the Nyayo National Stadium. <laughs> Nairobi Regional Commissioner James Kianda says all preparations are complete ahead of Saturday's event. The ICT ministry has tried their best to ensure that we link the rest of Kenya with this event that is going to be done at Nyayo National Stadium. Only 5,000 people will be allowed in the stadium as part of COVID-19 protocols. That stadium is supposed to accommodate about 35,000 people while seated in a normal event. But we will only now be able to space them so that we only have 5,000 of them. Kianda says sanitizers have been placed at the five entry points at the stadium in a move to ensure there is no transmission of the virus from one person to the other. All the entry points within the stadium to make sure that we check the temperatures of those people who are coming in. 
And where it is detected that a member of the public is having a challenge because of uh, the variations in those temperatures, we have medical personnel, we have facilities already available to make sure we take care of some. National Youth Service has been tasked with the responsibility of ensuring everyone attending the event follows health protocols. We will make sure that we have masks available at the entry point to make sure that all of us inside the stadium have masks. We will also ensure at the point of entry that we sanitize everybody who is coming in. So sanitation facilities are also going to be provided in those gates. Even as the country celebrates the 57th Jamuhuri Day celebration, the second national event to be held in the country amidst the pandemic, it is evident that more needs to be done in a special way for the departed heroes and heroines who participated in the independence and liberation of this country. Reporting for Channel One News from Nyayo National Stadium, I'm Timothy Kipnosu. Thank you so much, Timothy Kipnosu, for that report. And of course, KBC Channel One will be monitoring all the events as they unfold tomorrow as the country celebrates Jamhuri Day. And we'll be coming to you live from Nyayo National Stadium as soon as that event kicks a start. So do check out also on YouTube. It will also be live on Facebook and all our social media uh, handles. So tell us where you tuned in from. I'll be glad to sample your opinion during this broadcast. In other news, Interior Cabinet Secretary Dr. Fred Matiangi has lauded the Kazi Mtani program saying it's the best bet yet in dealing with an employment menace facing the youth. Speaking in Kasarani where he opened the newly built Kasarani sub-county offices, Matiangi called on the youth who have not benefited from the program to be patient saying plans are underway to involve every person. Speaking while engaging the youth in the national hygiene program famously known as Kazim Tan in Kasarani, Matiangi said that the project will have a new lease of life beginning from next year. This even as he urged the youth who have not yet benefited from the program to be patient saying plans are underway to absorb more in the program. Yeah. Yeah. The interior CSU at the same time opened the newly built Kasarani sub county offices, Red a riot act to land grabbers. We have children in this neighborhood who want to play. We have children in this neighborhood to ensure safety during and after the festive season. Timothy Kipnusu for Channel One News. And today marks nine months since Kenya reported the first case of COVID-19, 270 days, and 14 people have lost uh, the battle to COVID-19 disease in the last 24 hours. The Ministry of Health says 673 more patients have tested positive for the disease, and again, we have a total of 90,978. Nairobi has in the last 24 hours recorded the highest COVID-19 positive cases at 211. Nakuru, 113. Kilifi, 61. Busia, 41. And Migori Cups, the top five list with 34 new cases. On a rather positive note, 325 patients have recovered from the virus in the same period under review.
Again, it's nine months on. Let's get to the basics. Just wash your hands, sanitize, and stay at home if you can. It's a personal responsibility when you are infected with COVID-19. You will realize how expensive this disease is to manage. This means staying at home. If you are self-employed, that's loss of income. If you are working in a company where they cannot wait for you, that means loss of employment. So let's take it personally. In other news, like Kipia County government has unveiled Nanyuki Town's first ever monument that will be used to commemorate the 100 years the town has been in existence since it was gazetted by the colonial government. The monument erected at the heart of the town will contain vital information about the town where visitors will read its history. Constructed by the Laikipia County Assembly, the headstone in its pyramid shape pinpoints Nanyuki Town from the global Kenyan and Laikipia County map for an easy identification. Speaking during the unveiling ceremony, Speaker Patrick Waigwa said that it is through good governance that the town has grown to its current status and many investors are still streaming in looking for space. In Nairobi, parents from Buruburu Girls High School are up in arms with the developer of a nearby estate for allegedly grabbing an access road despite a court order stopping the acquisition of the same piece of land. Led by the school's PTA chairman, the parents claim the private developer demolished the school's perimeter wall despite the court order. We find it is quite insecure and now we ask that, as our legal counsel has said, we are just hoping that all will be well and we will get back our driveway. Elsewhere, in Embu County, two people were escaped dead by a whisker after their car was reduced to a red cage by a counter truck along Embu Kiritiri Highway. The truck that was carrying bars of maize lost control and landed on the private car that was transporting meat. Moses Nyaga, a father of three, is counting himself lucky for coming out of the red cage and hurt. <laughs> Soso huko amafikiri yangu ni mbriki haikuwa nayo. Sasa akijaribu kukata teremuke pande ya chini ndio ameweza kuturalia sisi. Na gari yetu lakini tulikuwa tumejaribu hata kumuondokea kabisa. Tulikuwa wawili lakini Mungu ametusaidia tumetoka sote tukiwa wazima. Meanwhile, stakeholders in the tea sector are apprehensive that the tea bill currently awaiting president's assent will save the already limping tea fact sector. Vika MP Patrick Wenaina says passing into law of the tea bill will be the best Christmas gift for the farmers. It's the issue of saying that the tea has not been purchased by the, by the auction and it has to go through the direct buyers. That is where our problem is. Those are the cartels that we want to deal with and the bill deals with those cartels. <laughs> Nkirinyaga, Governor Anne Waiguru, was installed as the chief patron of Daughters of the Mountain. The faction is comprised of young, established women in both professional and business fields. The group, which comprises of women from Kirinyaga, Kiambu, Nyeri, and Nakuru counties, was inspired by the fact that she had endured many battles to become the first women governor in Mount Kenya region. And when someone is picking a stone to hit at a woman, you as a woman should be the last person. You cover the nakedness. If there is, you call them aside or send somebody. There, there's ways. Finally, Bungoma County Commissioner Samuel Kimiti has warned that the youth against being used to disrupt funerals for monetary gains. Ikiwa kuna muti yoyote anafikiria atalete maneno ingine isipokuwa ya kusika ama kusidikicha ya muhechimi wa wetu. Huyo hata tunamuambia, ikiwa hakuji masichi, the administrator was speaking ahead of the battle ceremony of the late Cab Chai MP James Lusweti Mukwe. Quick 
shilingi moja unaweza nunua pizza. Uh -huh. Shilingi mbili unaweza nunua micro. Uh -huh. Shilingi tano unaweza nunua hata kari. Sio tupeleke huko hata. Ah ah mtu aende huko. Jiunga na Quickbit ni rahisi. Enda kwenye Mpesa, bonyeza Paybill kisha weka business number 4032353. Kwenye account weka kodi ya bidhaa unayotaka na bidii yako ya chini zaidi. Kwa mfano TV 16. Kisha weka shilingi 20 tu kama idadi yako. Weka bidii yako pia kwenye www.quickbit.co.ke. Kumbuka, bidii ya chini zaidi ya kipekee ndio ununua. Quickbit, bidhaa bora kwa bei ya chini. The Kenya Film Commission presents the 10th edition of the Kalasha International Film and TV Awards 2020. And the winner is, and the winner is, and the winner is, and the winner is, and the winner is. Let's now get down to business and energy and petroleum regulatory authority says the suggestion to levy hefty fines on those who flout the proposed solar regulations 2020 aims at protecting consumers from substandard solar products that have flooded the market energy and petroleum regulatory authority principal renewable energy officer Caroline Kimadi says complaints from consumers of a poor quality solar equipment has been increasing in the recent past prompting the move by the regulator. Since the Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority published the draft Solar Regulations 2020, debate has raged with some Kenyans claiming the new rules were meant to stifle the increased uptake of solar products and protect Kenya Power's revenue. However, the regulator says the new regulations are meant to entrench professionalism and protect consumers from poor quality products and service. We are not protecting Kenya Power in any way uh, because remember we are licensing the people who are going out there to install. We have not said that because of this regulation you cannot install solar, but rather do it with a licensed person. EPRA says 50% of the solar lamps in the market have been failing within a year of purchase, drawing complaints about quality of solar products. A normal user would be looking at the solar system as a source of energy. So you don't have to have a system installed today, which will fail after two days. The proposed regulations require that solar companies pay 5,000 shillings for any product model brought into the market. Product coming into the Kenyan market should meet the standards, so that then the end user is confident that when I go to a shop and buy a solar lantern of 1,000 shillings, it will be able to meet my energy requirements. The rules propose a fine of 50,000 shillings for service providers convicted of not having valid documentation, while those who offer false product information could be liable to a fine of up to 1 million shillings. We will require the installer to report on the systems installed. So as a regulator, we will not inspect all the systems. EPRA is calling on a review of the 14% tax levied on solar products, saying the move could be counterproductive to the government's quest to source 100% of energy from renewable sources. Benson Rioba reporting for Channel One Business. And the National Cereals and Produce Board has unveiled five more aflatoxin testing laboratories at its facilities. The laboratories will be in Meru, Eldoret, Machakos, Kitale and Nakuru, bringing to six the number of aflatoxin testing laboratories in Kenya. Previously, there was just one aflatoxin testing laboratory in Nairobi. In efforts to curb aflatoxin contamination in locally produced cereals and milk, the National Cereals and Produce Board has increased its testing capacity by installing five more testing laboratories across the country. The five located in Meru, Eldoret, Machakos, Kitale and Nakuru will complement the capacity handled by the lab in Nairobi. NCPB Managing Director Joseph Kimote said that the testing facilities will provide testing services to value chain actors including farmers, traders, millers to ensure that grains they handle are safe and of acceptable standards. 
The equipment installed uses the ELISA test method and can test all mycotoxins that exist in grain and other foods. NCPB says the ramifications of procuring a flatoxin maize include destruction of food and loss of funds. The authority is seeking to prevent a recurrence of these incidences and ensure that the Kenyan consumer has access to clean and safe food for consumption. The general public and all stakeholders, including millers, grain processors, traders, institutions and farmers, have been invited to use these services, which will be charged at a fee of 1,740 shillings per sample. Betty Kiptum, Channel 1 Business. And over 150,000 coconut farmers in the coastal region are set to benefit from 100 million shillings coconut revolving fund launched today by Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Peter Munya. The CS said the fund is set to increase value addition of the crop, improving its competitiveness in the market. Yes. At all. The coconut subsector contributes a paltry 1.5% of the aggregational GDP and 0.4% of the total GDP. The sector earns 13 billion shillings annually. Agriculture CS said the subsector has the potential to make 25 billion shillings annually, insisting this needs to be tapped. Of course, we are also looking into the issues of value addition, processing, um, but we believe the challenge is not processing. The capacity is already there. What is uh, lacking is the products themselves. Then we move now into expanding capacity. Munya added that there is need to ensure sufficient inputs reach the farmers to increase production from the current 35 nuts per tree to 150. Uh, coconut farming has been relying on old trees, varieties that have very low production. And we've been able to introduce new varieties of seeds that are able to produce better and more quickly and that also grow very fast and that also are resilient. Farmers in the area have been decrying low access to credit due to lack of collateral, with the CS promising a review of the fund to make it more agile. This fund, which we have set up today, that is supposed to support coconut farming in this region, is going to deal with that very key bottleneck that has been making it difficult for this value chain, the coconut value chain, to continue driving access to credit for women, for youth, and even for the small-scale farmers who are men. Kwale County Governor Salim Vuria, who was in attendance, pledged support to the subsector through drilling boreholes and building dams to facilitate irrigation. <laughs> Implementation of new policies on this revolving fund, the farmers are set to reap more benefits from this cash crop. Reporting for Channel One Business News from Kale County, I'm Michael Mundiga. Tunisia's Agriculture Minister, Ministry has launched a direct-to-consumer program to help farmers who have lost significant revenue due to the pandemic, offering farmers the chance to deliver their fresh date fruits to consumers at open-air marketplaces, with most marketplaces suffering heavily due to the COVID-19 health crisis. Tunisia's interprofessional group of dates is financing dozens of special trade fairs throughout the country as part of the Agriculture Ministry's marketing program to connect producers with, directly with consumers here are the details of this and more in our international business roundup agriculture ministry marketing program to connect producers directly with consumers aims to generate an increase in local consumption of date fruits and fill gaps in distribution channels which were disrupted by the pandemic Tunisia expects date production to exceed local demand in the next few years, with forecasts predicting record harvests of more than 400,000 tons by 2025, partly due to the cultivation of over 30,000 hectares in the southern region of the country for date palm trees. This year's harvest season produced around 345,000 tons. However, many farmers lost over 50% of their annual revenue due to the impact from COVID-19. Tunisia expects to export 130,000 tons of dates to Europe and Asia. 
Meanwhile, Disney plans for a major expansion of its Star Wars and Marvel franchises on its Disney Plus subscription streaming service. The company said that its upcoming films, Peter Pan and Wendy, and Tom Hanks' Pinocchio, would be launched directly onto Disney Plus, skipping theaters. Disney is the latest major studio to divert its focus from cinema to streaming. Warner Brothers says all its 2021 releases would debut on HBO Max. The coronavirus crisis crisis has hit the film and entertainment industry hard and cinemas are desperate for content to lure viewers back with new entertainment that can initially only be seen on their screens. Finally, the U.S. Federal Communications Commission has ordered certain U.S. telecommunications companies to remove Huawei equipment from their network. The Federal Communications Commission has also started the process of revoking China's telecoms authorization to operate in the U.S. The rip and replace order is the latest move by the U.S. against Huawei made on national security grounds. The latest order includes subsidies for smaller carriers for removing and replacing the equipment. However, the the Federal Communications Commission cannot actually implement their reimbursements without the approval of funding from Congress. Betty Kiptum, Channel One Business. In sports news, Athletics Kenya Federation, which has been nominated by World Athletics as one of top six federations of the year 2020, will hold its 70th anniversary commemorations on the 15th of this month at the Nyayo National Stadium. The federation has dedicated the celebrations to all athletes who have been on the forefront in putting Kenya in the world map in the globe, uh, global competitions. Rather, the ceremony will be aired live on KBC Channel 1 Television on Tuesday next next week. Athletics Kenya 70th anniversary celebrations which will be held at the Nyayo National Stadium next Tuesday and broadcast live on KBC Channel 1 will include matching by a selected number of former and current Kenyan athletes from 1950s to date. A display of athletics equipment impl implements medals and artifacts from 1950s to date. It, it is a few icons, and these are to represent the current generation. We really want to concentrate with the old ones because this is the only opportunity we have to celebrate them. And like I said, Athletics Kenya is turning 70. If we give it 30 more years, then we'll be, God willing, we'll be able to celebrate the, the, the current ones. But we'll pick very few uh, icons. The federation, which has been nominated by World Athletics as one of the top six federations of the year 2020, has won the Kenyan Sports Federation of the Year Award three times in 2006, 2009, and 2010. They did during those good many good years. If we need to have such uh, uh, information given by the uh, technical leaders to ensure I come back this young man run clean. Nikitu muhimu sana na tuna 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 tunachukua constitution yetu ya athletic Kenya iwe ifatwe kamalifu alafu kama iko shida tunajua kutatizwa ile shida yetu kwa sababu najua ukibomoa nyumba yako nyumba inabeba watu wengi na inasaribu so ile kitu iko ni kuongoza mema na tunapatia heshima sasa it was founded in 1951 as Kenya Amateur Athletics Association from 1951 until 2002 when the organization changed the name to Athletics Kenya. The association was formed as a requirement in any country wishing to send athletes to international competitions, especially the British Empire and Commonwealth Games. Frederick Mwoki for Channel 1 Sports. 
Still locally, Nairobi City Stars have moved up to third position on the FKF Premier League table after defeating Mombasa-based Bandari FC 2-0 in the only match played today at the Kasarani Stadium after a slow start of the game that saw both sides create few chances and end the first half goalless. City Stars needed two quick goals in the second half to secure maximum points and move up to third on the table with six points behind KCB and AFC Leopard. City Stars have now won two matches and lost one. Four more matches are on card tomorrow. Champions Gormahia will open their new season against Ulinzi Stars. Second place AFC Leopards face Sofa Parker. Tasca FC will be away to Western Steamer while Kario Banki Sharks play newly promoted Bidco United. And Leeds have a paucity of centre backs as they prepare to welcome West Ham at Eland Road tonight with Robin Koch out for up to three months following knee injury and Diego nursing a muscle strain. Head coach Marcelo Belsa has indicated that Luke Aling will deputise alongside Liam Cooper while Rodrigo will start. West Ham's top scorer Michael Antonio will, is again doubtful too. So Sebastian Haller is likely to continue in attack. Ryan Fredericks is expected to be available after a three-match absence with a growing strain. Here is the weekend's full fixtures in our weekend diary. So that weekend diary brings us to the end of Channel One weekend this Friday night. Let me quickly have a look at two or three uh, of your feedback. Bernard Kituri watching us live from Yaya Center. That's on our Facebook Live. And Robin Gatana watching from again 2B. And then we have Ricky. You're saying you're watching from Kithungo, watching from Siriwo. And then on Twitter, let me just have a look at two. We have. Sir Gibson, you're saying you are tuned in and you wanted a shout out. All right, there you have it. Then we have Lord Kevin, you're saying you are watching. Teacher Jose Felix Award, watching from Migori County. Thank you all for you company. My name is Purity Museo and Simon Carotha has been a sign language interpreter this evening. Do enjoy the rest of our programming. Good night. Up next is weather forecast. Stay tuned for that. Good evening, this is Channel One Weather Updates. My name is Irene Mchuma Odem. We're looking towards a sunny Jamhuri day. Yes, tomorrow, Saturday, it will be sunny, especially during the morning hours. But before we get into the nitty gritty on that, let's establish what is happening tonight. And most parts of the country have been covered with partly cloudy conditions, save for the Lake Basin region and western parts of the country where there are showers accompanied by thunderstorms. But that is just of a few places. Tomorrow, as I mentioned earlier, it will be sunny right from the northern parts of the country to the coastal strip, southeastern lowlands, the Lake Basin region, western parts of the country. There will only be wet conditions of a few places. This will affect Malindi and Mombasa areas during the early morning hours. In the afternoon, there will only be showers accompanied by thunderstorms in a few areas of Kisi, Kakamega and Narok. The northern parts of the country, the coastal strip will mainly experience 
sunny intervals, but a few areas in mountainous regions, Meru and Nyeri, will experience wet conditions during the afternoon hours. Let's cross over to temperatures. This is it. The highest across the country will be experienced in Mandera and Lodwa at 35 degrees Celsius. The capital will experience highs of 24 degrees Celsius. A perfect weather for us to take advantage of uh, light clothes and also engage in outdoor activities. Be well. See you tomorrow. God willing.